Hey! This smoke here. Okay, this isn't on. Oh, wait, it is on. I'll just tell you straight off, this is Jim Jarmusch's latest movie, Limits of Control, and I'm not really sure what to say. Um, has a bunch of, you know, I never write down anything, so I can't really tell you who's in it. I know Bill Murray is. There's a bunch of people with a bunch of foreign names. Um, tell you the plot, uh, there's this guy who has a, uh, I guess an occupation. He's going around Spain. And very slow paced movie, you see almost every detail of his day. He goes around to a cafe and always orders two, uh, he always orders uh, two espressos in two separate cups. And I'm guessing that's like a signal for, you know, that's the person, he's the person that you're supposed to meet. And someone at the cafe meets him, they talk about, are you in two, and then they fill in the blank. You know, uh, you know uh, art, music, blah blah blah. You know anything. Um, and then, and then they pull out a matchbox, and he pulls out a matchbox. They switch max matchboxes. He opens up the matchbox. He uh, he he opens up the matchbox. Finds a secret message. He opens it up. It's a secret code. I don't know if he knows the secret code or not. But anyway, he swallows the message. Downs it with the espresso. And that happens about five times in the movie in the first hour and a half of this two-hour film. And that's the film, pretty much. Um, thing is, you don't know what this guy is up to until the very end. And that doesn't answer a whole lot of questions. Um, because pretty much throughout this whole movie, when you see everything that this guy does, it's pretty, pretty just kind of passive. The way he does things, um, you can see that he has no, he really does not want to have any connection with anyone or anything, oh, any, well, he does have connection with things around him, but, um, but for anything that's around him. Um, this one is maybe sad, I'm not sure I really got a whole grasp of the first time I watched it, you know, I mean, I guess that'd be like me reviewing Sinatsky in New York on the f only on the first watch. Maybe I should watch this again. So, I'm not saying this is a bad review. Don't say this is a negative review at all. Um, uh, this guy is on a mission. I can't tell you what uh, happened, or what he's doing, or that we're in the movie. But this movie is just so drawn out and boring. I, I know that might I might be harsh, but it's just so boring. I don't know what this guy is up to. The, Jim Jarmusch gives you no clue on what this guy is up to. You don't know if anything these people are saying to him is in secret code or actual conversation. You don't... The only things you can really grasp from this movie is this cinemato beautiful cinematography. Really, this is the only thing you can grasp. I'm not exaggerating. You can only grasp the cinematography and the costumes these characters are wearing. And pretty much. Just the, ki just the people how do people look and how everything looks and and you can sort of tell that this sort of passive attitude this guy has sort of throws it throws it onto you and you just it has this blank atmosphere throughout the movie and all you're doing is just looking at how beautiful everything is I guess or how odd it looks I don't know um there's musical cues I guess where I'm supposed to feel sort of like a sort of emotion but I don't and after I found out what the conclusion of the movie is, I still don't, under, still don't understand the emotion I'm supposed to get. Um, it's just still a blank atmosphere. You know, when a David Lynch movie, you know, when um, when I saw the rabbits in the Inland Empire, when I saw the rabbits in the in in the in the sitcom, I felt a little creeped out. I didn't know why. Um, other movies like that, Sinatsuki in New York, I just felt deep emotion uh, within the symbolism. I didn't find anything symbolic or anything in this film. 
and even if it, even if it is, it's just because everything is some sort of specific existential a, a bit of symbolism. You know, maybe that's just not my cup of tea. Maybe I don't have the depth for that kind of movie. You know, uh, but it's very slow paced. Um, this guy hardly says two words throughout the entire movie. Um, whenever when ever someone someone ever goes up to this guy, they say. You don't speak Spanish, right? You know, he's in Spain. They go, you don't speak Spanish, right? And they always ask it in Spanish. And he goes... And then, then sometimes they even give entire monologues in Spanish to the guy. So I don't know if he actually knows Spanish or what's going on. And one time he drinks his espresso and, dr and there's like diamonds in it. Uh, you know, like, what is that about? So, you know, I don't know a whole lot about this movie. Um... I get it's very artsy. I it, I need to check out more Jim Jarmusch. Um, I have a whole collection of movies that I got from my trip from uh, Myrtle Beach. Uh, I ended up going to Myrtle Beach, coming back with a whole collection of movies. I don't know how that actually happened. It just movies just piled up somehow. Uh, I was I was either borrowing them or I found them at a at a video store for real cheap. Just different things like that show you what I got might give you an idea for f future reviews uh, see I'm, I need to I need to watch more Jim Jarmusch maybe I can get a grasp of his style maybe I was just looking at this thing at the wrong angle and maybe I just need to watch it again you know some songs are like that some movies are like that so <clears throat> excuse me here's coffee and cigarettes by Jim Jarmusch hairspray by John Waters I got some later era Woody Allen here. Anything else? What else by him do I have? Shadows and Fog. Hollywood Ending. And Curse of the Jade Scorpion. Which I think a lot of people are hating on. And I don't think they should hate on this movie. It's not that bad. I got Drag Me to Hell, which is really fun. If you haven't seen it, watch it. It's pretty cool. I got Blue, it is uh, Christoph Kiliowski's first movie in the Three Colors trilogy. Got Chinatown, Roman Polanski, haven't seen it yet. Melina, Coen Brothers, The Man Who Wasn't There. Uh, I think it run the movie for me to tell you what, what novel it reminded me of. And 66, Blockbuster exclusive. So, there you go. But, there's, uh, that's my review pretty much. I thought it was just really abstract. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. Jim Jarmusch wasn't paying attention to his audience, I don't think. I mean, he was expect. I can't, it, there's not much to wrap your head around. I mean, I mean, if if there was some sort of deliberate, like, delivery to it, but there isn't. It's just a very passive swipe of images, and, and you know, I, I didn't understand it. And it's almost deliberately, like, you're not supposed to understand it. You're just supposed to have this passive attitude toward it, towards it, and just kind of boring. But I want to know, if you understand the movie, I want you to tell me what you think. Alright? Well, thank you. Uh, thank you for watching. My back is getting better. Expect more reviews on the way. I'll see ya. Oh, by the way, the movie does have a really cool soundtrack. It's a bunch of, like, old Doom stoner metal, but... If you like that kind of thing, the, buy the soundtrack. I guess that'd be uh, get a kick out of that if you like that kind of thing. Because it did have some, uh, cool music. Even though I didn't get much music, it was trying to, you know, broadcast emotionally towards me. So, there you go.